بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ دا انفلمیٹری باؤل ڈیزیزز بائی انفلمیٹری باؤل ڈیزیزز وی مین دیٹ دا ڈیزیزز دیٹ آر کریکٹرائز بائی کرانک انفلمیشن آف دی اسمال انٹرسٹنٹ اینڈ موسٹلی دی لارج انٹرسٹنٹ دا ٹو میجر انفلمیٹری باؤل ڈیزیزز آر دی السریٹو کولائٹس اینڈ کرون ڈیزیز بوتھ آف دیز ڈیزیزز ہیو اسٹرانگ امیونولوجیکل کمپوننٹ اینڈ دا ٹو ڈیزیزز ڈفر فرام ایچ ادر اکارڈنگ ٹو دا لوکیشن دا پیتھالوجی اینڈ سائن سمٹمس وتھ کمپلیکیشنس دی کرون ڈیزیز کین انوالو اینی پارٹ آف دی ڈائجسٹو ٹریٹ فرام دی ماؤتھ ٹو دی ریکٹم وائل السریٹو کولائٹس از پریمیرلی این آٹو امیون ڈیزیز وچ انوالوز دی لارج انٹرسٹن دا ٹو ڈیزیزز وچ آر کریکٹرائز بائی دی کرانک انفلمیشن ان دا انٹرسٹن دی السریٹو کولائٹس انوالو اونلی دا میوکوزا اینڈ سب میوکوزا وی نو دیٹ دی انٹرسٹائن کنسسٹ آف دی فور میجر لیئرس starting from the inside is the mucosa then the submucosa then the muscular layer which consists of inner circular and outer longitudinal layers and the outermost layer found by the peritoneum is the serosa so in ulcerative colitis only the mucosa and submucosa are inflamed and involved but the crown disease all the four layers of the intestinal wall are involved in this type of involvement of the whole thickness of the intestine is known as the transmural inflammation or transmural transmural involvement the Ulcerative colitis, the common site for which is the rectum and sigmoid colon, it starts distally at the rectum and without any break, it continually extends in the large intestine and even it can involve the large intestine up to the ileocecal junction. But remember that ulcerative colitis will involve only the large intestine and in ulcerative colitis only the mucosal and the submucosal layers are damaged and inflamed on the other hand the crown disease may involve any site from the mouth to the rectum but the most common site affected is the terminal ileal terminal ileum and ileocecal junction and in crown disease a characteristic of the crown disease is that the diseased portions of the intestine are followed by healthy portions then the diseased portions and the diseased and the healthy portions alternate with each other and this type of appearance in crown disease is known as the skip lesions regarding the etiology of the inflammatory bowel diseases the exact etiology of inflammatory bowel diseases is not clear However, so much we know is that this is an interplay 
of the four major components. Both the inflammatory bowel diseases have got strong genetic associations. And if a member in a family suffers from the disease, the other members are also at risk. One most common gene that is studied and the mutations of which uh, is involved in the particularly in the Crohn disease is the node 2 gene. The node 2 gene codes for a protein known the node protein and this protein is the function of the node protein is identification of the bacterial structure and activation of the immune system. So in more than 50% of the patients with Crohn disease, they have no two gene mutations. However, the no two gene mutations may also be seen in some cases of ulcerative colitis. So genetic susceptibility and family history is strongly associated in inflammatory bowel diseases. The second component is the mucosal immune responses. Normally, the microorganisms and bacteria present in the large intestine make the microbiota. And our immune system establishes a mutual symbiotic relationship to the bacteria. By symbiosis mean that the two organisms give benefits to each other and do not cause any damage. The presence of bacterial flora in the large intestine is very important and it has got so many functions. For example, the undigested food which is not broken down in the small intestine, when it reaches the large intestine, it undergoes fermentation. And fermentation of the undigested food results in the production of short chain fatty acids. And these short chain fatty acids can then be used by the body for energy. Normally, our immune system do not respond to these bacteria. Moreover, the bacteria are separated from the epithelial layer by a strong layer of the mucus. And this mucus layer keeps the microorganisms away from the epithelial lining. The junctions in between the epithelial cells, they are tight junctions. And normally, the bacteria are its products. They cannot cross the epithelial junctions to go uh, into the epithelial lining. But in some individuals, and there are some conditions in which what happens that the tight epithelial junctions, they become weak. And the bacteria get away to enter into the intestinal wall and epithelial lining. The microbiota are the normal intestinal flora. Uh, here I want to mention that it is individually a unique characteristic. Each individual has unique intestinal flora that is unique for that particular individual. And the development of this flora passes through certain stages and it depends upon the person to exposure to various uh, infections. And 
then the intestinal flora is modified accordingly. So, the intestinal flora for each person is unique. And if any alterations occur in the intestinal flora of a person, he becomes a victim for the inflammatory bowel diseases. So, these factors in various combinations, genetics, aberrant mucosal immune responses, defects in the tight epithelial junctions, and alterations in the intestinal flora. In various combinations, they cause inappropriate immune activation. And once the immune system is activated, the immune cells upon activation release certain cytokines like tumor necrotic factor and interferon gamma that damages and destroy the mucosal epithelial cells. So, the inflammatory bowel diseases result from an interplay of genetic susceptibility, environmental factors, and epithelial defects that lead to inappropriate immune system activation. Ulcerative colitis is particularly an autoimmune disease in which the immune systems become activated against the existing normal flora of the large intestine. While in Crohn disease, some foreign pathogen participate in activating the immune system which later on attacks the intestinal epithelium and cause the disease. The book has given a postulated model for the, pathogenesis, for the pathogenesis of inflammatory bowel disease. And it says that in a genetically susceptible individual, the environmental factors cause epithelial barrier defect. And what happens as a result of these combinations that the bacteria present in the lumen of the large intestine, they get a way to enter through the tight epithelial junctions. And these bacteria, which in case of ulcerative colitis are totally the cell bacteria and uh, in Crohn disease, some foreign pathogens may be there. So whatsoever, but the influx of the bacteria and the bacterial components they will cause activation of both the branches of the immune system. The innate immune system, a person born with the immune system is the innate immune cells and innate immune system. And the adaptive immune system which is developed after exposure of the person to uh, some microorganisms and pathogens. So both the arms of the immune system are activated. And the activated immune cells then re release inflammatory mediators or cytokines. For example, tumor necrosis factor, interferon gamma released by the activated macrophages, various cytokines released by uh, helper T cells and proteases and lysosomes that are released from the neutrophils. So, these inflammatory cytokines, they damage the intestinal epithelium, which results in a chronic state of inflammatory disorder. Now, coming specifically to the Crohn disease, the Crohn disease is also known as regional enteritis because it most commonly involves the terminal portion of the ileum and ileocecal junction. However, it is important to remember that Crohn disease can occur anywhere 
from the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine, and the rectum. So it can occur anywhere in the gastrointestinal tract. Most commonly, in Crohn disease, the small intestine is involved. And it is followed by involvement of the small intestine along with the colon. And in comparatively less percentage of cases, only the colon is involved. As I said, that ulcerative colitis is an autoimmune disorder in which the immune reaction is activated by the normal flora bacteria present in the large intestine. But in Crohn disease, some foreign pathogens like pseudomonas, listeria, uh, etc., they are involved. And what happens that this foreign antigen, bacteria, bacterial components, it causes activation of the immune response. And the immune cells then causes destruction of the intestinal epithelial cells resulting in the Crohn disease. Now coming to the morphology of the Crohn disease, I said that in ulcerative colitis only the mucosa and submucosa are involved. So the ulcers they are comparatively initially superficial. But in Crohn disease, what happens that the whole thickness of the wall of the intestine, including mucosa, submucosa, muscular layer, and serosa, are all are involved. And what happens that in Crohn disease there is area of lesion which is followed by healthy area, then area of the lesion, then healthy area, then diseased area, and therefore it gives the appearance of the skip lesions. While in ulcerative colitis, there, is, there are no skip lesions. Ulcerate, in ulcerative colitis, the lesion is continuous, and usually it starts distally at the rectum and extends up uh, into the large intestine. The Crohn disease have serpentine ulcers, which are lineal ulcers. Initially, they are small ulcers, but when they coalesce, they form a snake-like shape. And these ulcers are situated along the length of the intestine, and they are known as the serpentine ulcers. Now, these ulcers may result in fissures in between the mucosal folds. And these fissures are very prone to become inflamed, damaged, and carry uh, risk of perforation. And even sometimes there may be a sinus trait formation a sinus tract is formed and which will make a communication between the intestine and extra intestinal organs. For example, uh, if the fistula communicate the urinary bladder and the intestine, it would result in the colovesical fistula in which the intestinal contents, they will pass into the urinary bladder and they are, will be uh, passed in the urine. The Crohn disease is a chronic inflammatory condition. And we know that one of the difference between acute and chronic inflammation is that in chronic inflammation, the element of fibrosis and scarring is added. So, in Crohn disease, the intestinal wall becomes thickened. As a result of transmural edema, inflammation, and fibrosis in the submucous layer, submucosal fibrosis, and particularly the hypertrophy of the 
muscular layer and all of these contribute to structure formation and we know that structure formation will result in intestinal obstruction under the microscope during the there are uh, in both the inflammatory bowel diseases there are remissions and relapses so during a remission the patient may develop serious symptoms and signs while during relapse the inflammation subsides and the patients get himself relieved so during the remission mostly when there is active inflammation there is infiltration of abundant neutrophils while in chronic conditions there may be infiltration of lymphocytes plasma cells and mononuclear macrophage system may be involved there we may see macrophages the crypt epithelium as we know that the inflammatory mediators they will destroy the crypt epithelium in the small intestine and the damaged crypt epithelia can be seen under the microscope since crohn disease is a chronic condition and any cells that are exposed repeatedly and chronically to irritation they will undergo metaplasia so the same epithelial metaplasia may occur as a result of the chronic relapsing injury as i said that the these diseases are characterized by remissions and relapses and the epithelial metaplasia which is particularly a gastric type of metaplasia may undergo dysplasia and we know that dysplasia in its severe form is a precancerous condition and carcinoma of the intestine may result normally the pained cells which are present in the small intestine and these pained cells they produce antimicrobial proteins they are antimicrobial and they will inhibit the bacteria to attack the intestinal wall so as epithelial metaplasia occur the pained cells which are normally present only in the small intestine they are also seen in the left colon and this is also a sign of epithelial metaplasia very characteristic hallmark of crohn disease are the non caseating granuloma if we recall tuberculosis the tuberculosis is characterized by the formation of caseating granulomas by caseating granuloma we means that the localized collection of epithelial cells surrounded by lymphocytes and an outer rim of fibroblast and which contains a central acellular area of caseation necrosis cheesy type of necrosis so the same granuloma are seen in crohn disease but in crohn disease the granuloma are non caseating granuloma there is no cheesy type of caseation necrosis seen in the granulomas associated with crohn disease the non caseating granulomas also occurs in some other conditions uh, for example the kerts crage disease and uh, leprosy sarcoidosis but in crohn disease the granulomas which are particular and which are considered to be a hallmark of the crohn disease when we have to differentiate it from the ulcerative colitis is the presence of the non caseating granulomas so when non caseating granulomas are present there it is crohn disease and it is not ulcerative colitis this picture shows the non caseating granuloma uh, uh, 
uh, in which there is a central area of modified macrophages which may also have giant cells and there is a uh, enclosing rim of the lymphocytes and on outside the lymphocytes there may be uh, a rim of the fibroblasts. The extra intestinal manifestations of the inflammatory bowel diseases are more prominent in Crohn disease as compared to ulcerative colitis. In ulcerative colitis, the extra intestinal manifestations mainly involve the liver resulting in cholangitis, but in Crohn disease, the antibodies which are produced by the plasma cells, they may also attack some sites outside the intestine uh, uh, due to molecular mimicry and can cause damage. The particular areas of uh, extra intestine areas that are affected in Crohn disease include the skin, the eye, bones and giants, kidney, liver and gallbladder. But liver in gallbladder, they are particularly considered as extra intestinal manifestations in case of ulcerative colitis. They are more prominent in ulcerative colitis. Now, coming to the ulcerative colitis, as uh, I told that ulcerative colitis is a continuous lesion. There are no skip lesions. The disease is continuous and mostly the common site that is involved in ulcerative colitis is the rectum and the sigmoid colon. But the disease may affect the intestine up to the ileocecal value. Remember that ulcerative colitis doesn't occur in the small intestine. In ulcerative colitis, since the mucosa and submucosa only are involved, so when the immune induced destruction of the mucosal epithelium, when the overlying area is sloughed off, it will result in the formation of an ulcer. And ulcerative colitis is purely an autoimmune disease in which there is an inappropriate reaction of the immune system against the intestinal flora. While in comparison in Crohn disease, uh, the initial event is activated by some foreign pathogens like Pseudomonas listeria and other bacteria. And the antibodies which are produced against the gut bacteria, they attack the intestinal epithelial cells. As the disease is more advanced, there may be intestinal atrophy, metaplasia, and which may progress to dysplasia, a precancerous condition. Both the inflammatory bowel diseases, ulcerative colitis and Crohn disease, they have strong risk factors for the carcinoma of the intestine. If the ulcerative colitis typically involves the rectum, this condition is known as the proctitis. If it involves the rectum and the sigmoid colon, then we call it as the proctosigmoiditis. If it involves hood of the descending colon, we call it as the distal colitis. And if involves the whole length of the large intestine, including proximal colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and rectum, then the condition is known as the pancolitis. In ulcerative colitis, there is ulcers formed in the mucosa and in between the ulcers the healthy mucosa may undergo hyperplasia and hypertrophy and it will regenerate and sometime 
it may uh, form masses protruding into the lumen of the intestine which are known as the pseudopolyps. Ultimately, in chronic long-standing conditions, the mucosa will become atrophic and it will lack its uh, appearance of the normal folds. The presence of neutrophils may cause crypt abscesses with the presence of inflammatory exudate in the crypts and as I told you that in chronic conditions there may be metaplasia, gastric type of metaplasia and uh, if it progresses into dysplasia uh, in its severe form it, it is a precancerous condition and may lead to the carcinoma of the intestine. Under the naked eye appearance, the colonic mucosa appears red and granular and uh, the broad based ulcers present in the mucosa can be seen. Now, in Crohn disease, the most common site is the terminal ileum and the ileocecal junction and it is also known as the regional enteritis. While in ulcerative colitis the most common site is the rectum known as the proctitis. The Crohn disease can involve any site from the mouth to the rectum throughout the GIT while ulcerative colitis typically involves only the large intestine. In Crohn disease, fissures are formed by the ulcers in between the mucosal folds and uh, they may give the appearance of cobblestones, white color among uh, uh, dark and uh, 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 white color areas. Uh, among the dark color areas which gives the appearance of uh, typical of the cobblestones. The intestinal wall in Crohn disease is thickened particularly due to muscular uh, hypertrophy and the thickened intestinal wall in the face of inflammatory edema exudation may lead to structure formations and which may cause intestinal obstruction. While in ulcerative colitis the healthy mucosa in between the ulcers may become hyperplastic and hypertrophic and it may form uh, pseudopolyps that project into the lumen of the intestine. Again, in long-standing conditions, the mucosa may, will become atrophic and it will lack its normal appearance of the mucosal folds. This is an endoscopic view of ulcerative colitis and we can see the ulcers that are present and can be visualized under the uh, endoscope. The diagnosis of inflammatory bowel diseases starts from the signs, symptoms, physical examination of the patient, baseline investigations, and then contrast imaging, for example, uh, computer tomography, magnetic resonance imaging and ultrasound, but the ultimate diagnosis will be made by colonoscopy. Introducing a colonoscope through the rectum and to see the underlying of the large intestine, particularly for ulcerative colitis, and to take a biopsy and to make a histopathological examination of the biopsy to confirm the presence that, uh, of lesions that are persistent with ulcerative colitis. Barium enema, enema in which a contrast dye is 
uh, given rectally and then a series of x-rays are taken can uh, be very helpful. While since the Crohn disease also involves the small intestine, therefore we take an endoscope and the lesions can be visualized in the endoscopy and here again the uh, biopsy is taken during endoscopy for histopathological confirmation of the presence of caseating granulomas and uh, histopathological changes cons consistent with the Crohn disease. Uh, contrast imaging, CT, MRI, ultrasound and other baseline investigations are also done uh, in Crohn disease as well as for ulcerative colitis. Now coming to the conclusion, what we said here, one thing, some interesting, I will mention that smoking, which is considered as a very bad habit, but it has been proved by the research that smoking and those patients who have undergone removal of the appendix, they give protection from the ulcerative colitis. But the same smoking will aggravate the disease, make the disease more serious and distressing if it is Crohn disease. The location for ulcerative colitis is the distal colon and rectum and sigmoid colon, while that for the Crohn disease is the distal ileum and cecum. It is therefore also known as the regional enteritis. In ulcerative colitis, the lesion is in the form of a continuous lesion starting from the rectum and extending upward to the large intestine, while the characteristic of the Crohn disease are the skip lesions, healthy areas alternating with the diseased areas. Histologically, ulcerative colitis involve the mucosa and submucosa while in Crohn disease the whole thickness of the intestine is involved known as the transmural uh, uh, involvement. In ulcerative colitis there is blood in the stool and the individual suffers from bloody diarrhea while in Crohn disease mostly there is watery diarrhea which are secretions, intestinal secretions into the lumen of the intestine. Ulcerative colitis, the complications are comparatively less severe, but they are more severe in Crohn disease because of the transmural uh, involvement in uh, the uh, exudation, edema, inflammation will lead to structure formation which may cause stenosis and obstruction of the intestine and the, there may be uh, pus filled sacs form known as the abscesses and these abscesses are very prone to rupture and they may sometimes form sinus tracts known as the fistula by communi communicating intestine to the intra extra intestinal organs for example to the urinary bladder forming a codovesical fistula. The malabsorption, weakness and weight loss, they will be more prominent in Crohn disease because here involvement of the small intestine occur. And we know that absorption digestion mostly occur in the small intestine. So patients of Crohn disease will suffer from malabsorption more severely than as compared to those of the ulcerative colitis. Both the conditions will lead to mucosal atrophy, metaplasia, dysplasia and high risk for bowel cancer. Thank you very much.